Annette, please stick with your question as well. Couldn't it plane the vertical of a triangle ABC have coordinates A, negative 3, 1, B, 6, 2, and C, 9, negative 3? What are the coordinates of the triangle's median's intersection point? So you understand what is uh, intersection of median, right? First of all, you know the theorem in any triangle. If you take any triangle, I just explain what is going on this way. <coughs> Conditionally. If you have any triangle, A, B, C. <clears throat> you take any side, let's say AC, split it by two equal pieces and connect. This would be, let's say, D, the first medium. After that, I split this by two pieces. And this would be the second medium. After that, I connect, split this by two pieces and connect this. <coughs> I get the third medium. And we have it here. All medium intersect at the same point. So we have common open or, or com common point of interception. Moreover, we have another theorem. We don't need for this, but generally speaking, if you take any median, so this part closer to base is one third of length of median. Let's say if median is six, this part is one third is two, one third of median. But we don't need this. So again, what you know, they intersected always in one point. And we have three points, three coordinates. Let's say A. negative three and one. I will make more space here to save time. D, six and two, and C, nine and negative three. How to find X coordinate, X of this, add them up. X of median point of intersection. Pretend we have Cartesian coordinates and this point X. And this is Y. X equals to X1, which is negative 3, plus X2, which is 6, plus 9, and divide by 3. Similar story with Y median. Y is one plus two and plus negative three, all this wise, and divide by C. I believe you can count without my help, right? But this idea, add them up and find average. Who understand this 100%, 100? Who has question? Ask me questions. Uh, Dr. Farber. Yes. So if you answer this, you get a uh, four comma zero, right? Yes, four comma zero is, what is it? X and if, Y. And you point X and Y. And let, let me see in multiple choice. This is D, four and zero. You can easily add them up, look at this. 1 plus 2, 3 minus 3, 0, 0 divided by 3 is 0. Just count by so I don't waste that. And the answer would be for this point M, it would be 4 and 0. Okay. Yes. What is uh, 1 over 3 in the picture? 1 over 3 is 
distance from point, we don't need for this form. This is another theorem about medium. If you have a triangle, any triangle, and you have a medium, medium is split by two equal pieces. If you have another medium, we split this side by two pieces, etc. So but medium look at this distance is shorter and this is longer. This part is one over three of medium, and this part from vertex is two over three of medium. So closer to this base is one over three. Okay. okay yes. Um, question. So median is like bisectors? No, absolutely not. Look at this. If you have a triangle, okay, let me make this short at some point. If you have triangle like this, and by uh, bisector is in this, and bisector is, you have to split angle by two. This equal to this. This is bisector. So it's cutting angle by, let's say this is 120 degrees, 60 and 60. And it's absolutely not in the middle of this segment. It's cutting angle by two. Yes or no? Yes, thank you. If you have medium, let's say the same picture. I take different color and medium cutting side by two pieces equal sides. This is a medium. Medium. And this not the same from this picture, not the same. Medium size, uh, side and the uh, Bisector is, is bisector is for angle. So far, so good. Yeah, thank you so much. Welcome. So you think that all this stuff you started for SAT, right? For SHSAT. Would you like a couple minutes I spent to explain how I use this theorem? It'll help thousands of people to save their uh knees joints for instance in this triangle you have middle point with the median so everywhere we have some middle point for instance you have a circle if you have a wheel bicycle right two words you know i'm master of trees i use a lot of i created many hundreds inventions in different fields and one about surgery using the theory. Look at this. If you have a wheel, present this bicycle, not nice wheel, but this is pretend this is ideal circle. And we have this point of rotation of your wheel. In the wheel, we have one point of rotation, right? Obviously, if you made the axis. This would X and rotated this wheel. Everybody knows, right? But every human being, have you seen a skeleton? Let's say if I give a skeleton of knee, it will look like this. Okay, approximately. The bone side. And this surface is very, very complicated. It's not a circle. The equation of this line is extremely complicated. And you bend this knee every time point rotation is different. So point of rotation in our knee depends on angle. For one angle at this point, when I bend this knee like this one, it will be another point, another point, another. And we have points of rotation, different points of rotation. Sometimes people, sometimes they have a problem. 
these surfaces, they work not good, and people have extremely pain in this knee. What do, what do they do? How surgeons help them? They put, uh, they're supposed to put access with special device in special destructor apparatus of Volkov Organisar. They make a hole, they drill a hole, and this hole they put metal rod. And after the two devices with like mesh gears, they, you can regulate, and these bones will be not what contacted so strongly. But the problem is how to make this this uh, this axis. Here is one axis, and here we have stones on them. So the surgeon people usually what they supposed to do, like we did, you count uh, x and y each of these coordinates, x and y, x one, y one, x two. Y2, add them up, divide by number of points like we did right now, and found a point which is in the middle, where all this medium, and this is not this point, let's say it's this one, or this one. After that, they use special devices, right? And for person, they make a hole here, put metal rod, Eventual the notebook. But the problem how to get this point. It's very difficult to count. I use physics and this math. I give one of my patterns. This is a pattern. Right? Many years ago when I was a student. And this how we count this point. Let me see. Oh, there is no drawing screen. What I did here in this pattern. Right? What I did, I put special uh, sources of lights, sources of lights, and one, let me put sources of lights, I use the red color. Okay, sources of lights. Dr. Farber, can I please go to the bathroom? Yes. And when person bent his knee in the dark, right? This is dark, lumpage. We will have on the film, we have different lines. After that, we study diffractions when you have laser and you put laser on this dark on these lines. And if we diffractions, lines of uh, diffraction, they intersected in one, this intersect somewhere, but in one point, it would be the brightest point. So without counting, you get this one. Medium, the surgeon make a fall, and people feel comfortable. So I am telling you about this, because everything interrelated. This real real invention, we implement this in Central Institute of Traumatology, the biggest institute in this in this domain in Moscow, and they have tons of different surgeon operation for this, based on this idea. Okay, students, I give you a chance to go to bathroom, two minutes, and we continue. Doctor Palmer. Yes. If you have a question, ask me. Yes. Uh, so, how does he found the middle point? Uh, is there some uh, like for example 100 points when the bones is uh, like flexible like the changes the point right when you move good, so good, question. good question one point would be the brightest point because all laser laser beam they go perpendicular to the slot and what all these lights but in one point we have majority of intersection of lights if you have many lines intersected at one point, this is a main point which is related to median of these centroids. The name is centroid. So the brightest point, like in our example, this triangle, if we wear a triangle, you will find this brightest point. Make a knowledge. 
because all these lights go perpendicular to this wall. On your film, you have your film is dark, and this uh, these sources of light they make it transparent film. After that, when I put monochromatic light, it goes perpendicular to the slot. In combination, all the slots give you the brightest point, which is centroid for why it's important because every person has you have to customize. If I make this for one patient, it doesn't work for another one for patient. We make it customization for each person supposed to be his point, like dark telescopy, right? Did I answer your question? Mm, yeah, thank you. So what about these hyperbole lines? These curve lines. So this one? no uh, no hyperbole line, this red line. Um, hyperbola. Here, you see on the red points, no behind, no, down, down. Here red point, there is four points, right? Uh not not that point, uh, down. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is light, lampache. Sveta diodi. Some let me put some very small sources of light. You I bend it to a uh, bones. After that person just make with knee like this, bended his knee. And all these lights on the film make a lines. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so when you come back, continue. From a group of six men and five women, four people should be selected to form a committee so that there are at least three men in the committee. How many different ways can it be done? Okay, thank you. You saw these questions many times, kind of this question, and this is 96. What do you know from this problem? We have six men, and what is given? six men and how many women and five women what is our goal our goal to have a committee from uh Four people, four people committee. And in this committee is supposed to be at least three men. This what we suppose. This is what is you and what is supposed to do. What is at least three men? When I see at least at most always specify. If you have three. This is three. This is men. Can we have three men? Yes. Can we have four men? Yes. Can we have more? No, because we have maximum four people. So four people in committee, I can represent by two branches. So one scenario, it could be uh, three men and plus one woman. In the second committee, if I have four men and zero women. So let's consider those scenarios. First of all, we have to understand what is given. To understand up to this point, consciousness, this is what you're supposed to do. Hands down. And you remember we studied formula how to mind how to find number of combinations C of M, right? By N equals or N by R, what I give you. N by N, what is more convenient? 
n by r, I believe. It's n factorial divided by r factorial by n minus r factorial. This number of combination. Now, since you have this, you have the first step. How many uh, combination you have three men out of this uh, amount what we have? Out of six people, out of six men. Okay. Six, choose three equals six factorial divided by three factorial by six minus three factorial. I just remind you, factorial is product of two numbers, a product of numbers, so let's say factorial of three. Is three times two times one. Product all of this number all the way down up to one. So, just you know. so let's count first. Six minus three is three. And you can write six times five times four times three factorial instead of writing this tail. And this is three factorial. And this three I will write like three times two times one. So three factorial and three factorial I cancel out. Three goes into six two times. Two goes into four two times. Okay. Two times five is ten times two twenty. So if you have six choose three, you have 20 combination in this case for many. Any questions? Today we're talking about men. In order to finish the same scenario, I have to consider second second things. Remember, we have three men, but we can count it, and one woman. So C, how many women we have? Five. C, five, choose one. Equals five factorial. Divide by one factorial. Multiply by five minus one factorial. So far, so good. This is four. So it will be five factorial. Five factorial is five times four factorial. The one factorial is one. Multiply by four factorial. Four factorial, four factorial cancel out, you have five. C of five choose one, we have five. Now we have a uh, so what we have, let's finish this number three and save space. In this committee, in this scenario, we have two shelves. In one shelf, we can choose, uh, we have 20, right? And the second shelf, we have five. Five choose one. All right, how to remember we did it many times. When you multiply this, you get 100. But this is not the answer. I just found, I started this scenario. This is case A. Now I have to count case B. This is case B. Any question about case A? Okay, exactly the same. What we have in case B? Yes. So in the last step, you did uh, 20 multiplied by five? Yes, it is. Why? 
if you go behind the scene, if you make, uh, let's say, three diagram, one, two, three, up to 20. And related to this, I'm talking about men. After that, each of these can have what? Five. One, two, three, four, five women. And since we have this is 20 points, each of these goals, these five segments, is 20 times five. Okay. But don't even try to do one diagram. Well, on the, it's unreal to make all these lines, but you did it, right? Did I answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, behind the scenes, the Venn diagram, uh, three diagrams. Sorry. So the next step, next, where is my eraser? Oh, here it is. I believe I answered your question, right? And the next we have, I use this one. Can you see this place if I write down? Uh, this is scenario, this is, was case A. And this would be case B. Okay, in case B, we have, uh, C, six, choose four. Why? Because we have four men out of six. No women in this case. So I write here six factorial divide by four factorial multiply by six minus four factorial, which is six factorial is six times five times four factorial, divide by four factorial, six minus four is two, and two is two times one, and four factorial and four factorial cancel out, and two goes into six three times. So in case B, we have 15 combinations. So far, so good. Any questions? Step number four. This is three, this is what's four. Four. Because step three was over there. And step five. What we're supposed to do? You combine two cases, A and B. In A, we have 100 plus 15, uh, 100 plus 5, we've already took in consideration, is 100 is from case A. And 15 from case B. This is A and 15 B. And if you want 15. That's it. Behind this is simple. And this beautiful formula help us a lot. Who has any question? Ask me. Dr. Faber? Yes. Why did you add in, uh, add, add in case A and case B? This is two different scenario. This is scenario for committee when you have three men and one woman. And the second scenario when you have only four men, it's two different scenarios, they're not interrelated. It's not the same. You have to add them up. So it's the same, I don't know, maybe not good example. You go to one restaurant and you choose from, let's say 20 entries by five. And you go to another restaurant and you choose from 10 uh, entries by three. And after that, they ask you how many you have different combination, you add them up. This is two different scenario for committee. 
Did I answer your question? What is what is committee mean? Committee, committee. Thank you. In each school, we have committee. So many, still again, many uh many words they have the same Latin roots. So don't be. I give example. Who knows what is convey? Convey. Convey. What is Eric? What is convey? To show or like explain. Can okay. you can I speak out loud? To show something to convey maybe, something. This. Maybe, maybe, but I give example. Don't be afraid of English words. Many of these they have the same Latin roots. Everyone knows conveyor, right? Conveyor, переносить. So convey is connected to this, the same roots. When you see committee, this is committee, the same, the same sounds. Okay, don't be afraid of this word. In addition, if you don't know some word, don't give up with this test. You think about this thingy or object and keep doing, okay, good. Miss A B C D the elements are A C equals twelve and B D equals eight. But the points K and L are the midpoints of sides A D and C D was the area of the shaded region. Thank you. So number ninety-nine. Let's make this rhombus. Kind of like this. And uh, this ABC, ABCD. And this KL, let's say. And they said this and this equal to this and this. You know, rhombus is program where all sides are the same. And this is point of intersection of diagonals point E. Okay. In addition, they give you one diagonal is eight. This diagonal is eight units. And this is 12. And they connected these points, take different column. And they ask you to find area of this triangle. To find area of triangle, take different color. Look at this. Since we are gonna do move forward, this KL is mid segment. Why? Because it connects middle of the sides. If KL is makes mid segment, mid segment, and you know the theorem: mid segment parallel to the side. And equal how of this. So if this is 12, this side would be what? Six. Six. Property of mid segment. Now, in the same manner, BE, you have a theorem that diagonals of rhombus in a point of intersection cut by half. So it means this is four. And this is four. But I need B F, let's say. Why? Because B F is my height. This height base I have six. This is six. And this is height. How to find height? BF. So again, KL is the base of triangle. 
and height equals four. But since this is mid segment, it cut this each side by tau. So this is two and this is two. So this piece is two. Four plus two, which is six, right? Now, how to find area of triangle? Base times height divided by two is six times six divided by two. Two goes into six three times is 18 square units. Again, what I did here, I use property of mid segment and instantly get this base. After that, I use theorem the diagonal of rhombus in point of intersection to this point of intersection, cut by half. So this is four and this is four. But since this is mid segment, it cutting this height and this triangle by half again. So it becomes two plus four is six. After they just use formula with the starting first grade for area triangle. Who understand this comparison of this point? Dr. Faber? Yes. What is B what is B here equal? B is B? Base, base. B equals to six. Mm -hmm. Six B. So any triangle has base and height. Any more questions, students? Okay, no questions. It was 97. Uh, it was not 96, it was 99. Yes, I can cross it out. Again, many students ask one or three. One or three. What do you have in a one or three? No, nothing to read. This equation and then equal. So many times I told you in our course, when you have equation and equality, always start from equation. 99%. Why? Because equation usually, linear equation, it has one solution. In, in in equality have can have infinite set of solutions. So that's why in one or three we have S over M equals to what? Uh, twelve. And M is less than negative four. They ask you to find find S maximum, the greatest one. So look at this. This is equation inequality. Imagine this is 12 for 1. Cross m times 12 for 12 m equals to s. I want to express m in terms of s. So this is the same if I divide by 12 both sides. I found that M equals to S over 12. Now I take this S over 12 and plug in straight over there. And what I'll get S over 12 less than negative four. If we multiply both part by 12, I get S 12, 12 cancel out, less than negative 48. 
if you make a number line, number line, this is S, and this is less than, this is negative 48, not included, my fault. And this solution set. So since number line zero somewhere here, number goes this way. So the greatest possible value here from this solution set is negative 49. Okay. Who understands how to set this one? Yes. What is negative 49 is the maximum, not for negative 48. I say it again, how do you hear? Uh, why does negative 49 is a maximum, not negative 48? 48 is not included. It's less than, you see, when you multiply, it's true inequality. You may call it that. Everything which is less, not 48. If it were less or equal, it would be 48. But this is less, it's given, less. So far so good? When you make a pull, it means you can't use this number, it's not included. Did that answer your question? Oh, yeah, thank you. Okay, this was one of three. Next, when you still ask one or four. What is one or four? Let me find this one or four. Okay, Daniel, uh, Daniel T, would you like to read 104, please? Yes, 104. In the isosceles trapezoid ABCD, the diagonal AC is perpendicular to the side CD. If angle CAD equals 30 degrees and CD equals 4, what is the perimeter of the trapezoid ABCD? Thank you. So, first of all, make a picture, right? Big picture bigger than you have. Because nice picture, most chances you will solve it correctly. One of four. Let me make us I saw the trapezoid. Okay. Let's make it isosceles means these two sides are the same. In Russian, равнобедренная for people from Europe. So it means this side equals to this side. And uh, let me implement uh, some of this A, B, C, D. And uh, I take a ruler and make this diagonal. If we connect them, and this is diagonal. What else is given here? This is not just diagonal. This is right angle, and this I saw so is each side equals to four. What else do we know? I know this angle equals to 30 degrees, right? Let me see again. We close it. Which angle 30 degrees you read? One of three. It's one of four. And this angle equal to 30 degrees, this angle. I remember 30, but forget which one, 30. Okay. And what is supposed to find? You have to find perimeter. Find perimeter. Perimeter of this trapezoid. So step number one. Step number one. 
uh, triangle ACD is right triangle. When you study right triangle in chapter 13, you know a property without any trigonometry. Angle, if a triangle, right triangle with angle 30 degrees, the leg opposite of 30 degrees, can you see this? The leg opposite of 30 degrees equals to half of hypotenuse. So this AD. AD equals four times two, which is eight. And here in comments, property of 30 degrees angle. When I teach you trick, it would be you can use sine of 30, but for now, without any trick. If you have any right triangle, and this is 30 degrees, so let's say this is 7, this is 14, period, two times bigger. To understand this curve, this step, this is theorem about 30 degrees angle. Okay? Put the hands down. Again, if you have any questions without presentation. Now I have a I have eight, I have four, I have four. If I knew this one, BC, I just add them up. But in chapter 13, you know, in trapezoid, opposite sides are parallel. So this side and this side is parallel. And AC, AC is transversal. Transversal, Sikusia, transversal. And these two angles are alternate interior angles. Angle C equals to 30 degrees, property of alternate, alternate interior. Okay. What else do we know? Step number three. What about angle C from triangle ACD? Angle C equals 30 plus 90 plus 60. 30 plus 60 complementary. Angle D, I need, I don't need C, I just write it faster. Angle D equals to 60 degrees. How I found this? 90 minus 30, because one, if one is 30, this must be 60. Understand up to this point, everything. Who does not? And so, if this is 60, I take different color. If this is 60, this is 60. Why? Because I have base angle of isosceles trapezoid. Angle H four. Angle H equals to sixty degrees. And you can write in parentheses base angle for if I saw so this trapezoid. If this is let me write I saw so this trapezoid. Number five, if this is 60 angle B, A, C, I take different color, this angle.
equals 60 minus 30. Conjunction postulate. 60 minus 30, which is 30 degrees. To understand up to this point. If this angle 30 degrees and this angle 30 degrees, I can tell that triangle ABC is isosceles triangle. It means this red side equal to this red side. Why? Because these two angles are base angle of, of triangle. If two base angles are the same, then triangle is isosceles. If triangle is a social, is then if this is four, this is four. I just prove it. So BC equals to four and triangle ABC isosceles. Isosceles. So the very last step, how to find perimeter, you have everything. I will not add them up. Four plus four plus four, actually four, 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 three times four. And plus eight. Okay. Raise your hand for understand up to this point, everything. And Dr. Faber. When you write down, so you can write 20 units, whatever. Yes. Uh, so you found eight because it's a property of uh, parallelogram. Okay. Stop slow down. A little bit slow and uh, clear. Say clear. Okay. And so how do you found eight? This angle eight. Mm -hmm. First of all, do you understand how I found G angle? Mm, because it's two remote angles, so you. Must... Uh, Our D angle, look at this. Angle D plus 90 plus 30 equals to 180, right? Because total of inner angle of any triangle is 180. 90 plus 30 is 120 minus 120 and minus 120. I found angle D equals to 60. When I found angle D equals to 60, and this trapezoid is the same like isosceles triangle. If this is 60, isosceles, both sides the same. So both angles are supposed to be also the same. This side, uh, this side the same. So this angle, both of them, 60 degrees. So far, so good. Hundred percent or maybe. Yeah, but how did you found eight? Eight. Let me put this again. I will take different color or use this mark. Look at this. If we have forget about trapezoid. If this is isosceles triangle, and this is sixty, how many degrees in this angle? Oh, so can you say it again? 60. 60. Here, what is trapezoid? Trapezoid is when you cut, because it's made of cheese and you ate up this part. And this is isosceles trapezoid, and this side equals to this. And this angle is 60. How many degrees in this angle? 60. Exactly the same. So regardless, it's triangle trapezoid in one angle 60, another because I saw so. Yeah, but how did you found the eight? Like the side eight, AD is equal to eight. Oh, you're talking about this side? Mm -hmm. We have a theorem about 30 degrees angle. If you have any triangle, let's say this is triangle. Where you have right angle, and this leg, let's say A, B, C. And this leg 
is located opposite of 30 degrees angle. You see this opposite of 30 degrees angle? Yes yeah. or no? Yes. So this side always two times bigger. If this is four, this must be eight. This is property of theorem about right triangle with 30 degrees. Two times bigger, always. Did I answer a question? Look at this. This is right triangle. This side is four. Then this side must be eight by this theorem. So you, you're supposed to find this theorem 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees? You have to not to find, you have to know this theorem. Okay. If you have right triangle with 30 degrees angle, like this. Let me show this small right triangle. And pretend this angle is 30 degrees. So wherever you have this side, let's say this is five side five, my pattern is supposed to be 10. If this is four, this is eight. If this is 15, this is just multiply by two. This theorem you have to know. This is your tool. And you start the student. I'm very surprised a little bit. Now let me put this way. Why I'm surprised? I'll explain why I'm surprised. Because today we did diagnostic test, right, for chapter 13. And I believe you not follow my homework, my friends. I don't mind to answer all your questions, but I, my request to do homework. I open chapter 13 for you right now. And we study right triangles. And you do not study this. Oh, interesting. Okay, let me find this just a sec. We did with you many times, I believe in this chapter, right? So open, uh, Alexander, open page two and everybody, open this page. Okay. Page, let me find this page two mm -hmm. two or six two or six and read this uh eight eight on the top if you have triangle 30 60 90 read out cloud a proper theorem uh, 30 60 90 Yes, just read this property A out loud. The leg opposite the 30 degrees angle is one half of the hypotenuse. This was your homework, my friends. So if this is eight, this is half. And vice versa, if this is four, this is eight. This is your homework. So a special Alexander and everybody, we do this exercise number number three. At home, don't forget. Exercise three. So again, student, this is key thing. This is basic. I don't give you big books, but whatever you have here, you can easily use it in this one. Did you get answer 100 percent Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, but redo this exercise, not good. And all this relationship. Okay, good. It was that's why you're asking questions. You're not doing from your homework. Definitely ask you questions. It's one of four. Okay, many students ask one of eight. Daniel R, would you like to read one of eight? One or eight, yes. please. It was your question. In the, in the regular hexagon, the side length is two centimeters. What is the area of the shade in the region? Mm -hmm. So, 
Let me try to make a picture somehow. If I had more time, I would use compass all this stuff, but I'm not specific. So in one way, we then I make a picture like this. Is this a circle? Let me use this one. Without picture, we can't I can explain you nice. Kind of so, okay. After that, I supposed to build what hexagon. And I try to build the hexagon up here. And this uh, circle inscribed in hexagon. Actually, I'm sure it's supposed to make another circle. Circle. But anyway. Okay, this is tangent to this. This is tangent to this. Okay, let me comment this point of tendency by line, and this imagine this is the center somehow. Okay, and uh, let me do like this. Let me build like this. This. And this. Not to scale. Imagine that we have this kind of hexagon and circle is inscribed in hexagon. Let me see, did they do correctly what they have in this picture? Yes, it is. And length so far, side equals to two. You know, in regular hexagon, all sides equals to two. And they ask you <coughs> to find what the length of shaded region? And where is shaded region? Shaded region is between this one, shaded region. Okay, I need to build a couple more lines here. For explanation, let me take this green color. And pretend I have diagonals of this hexagon. Then diagonals of hexagon, they go what? So what? To the center. Okay. Pretend this is to scale, right? And uh, if I make it more precisely, I will have. A O B. I'll have one triangle, another triangle, another triangle, another triangle, another triangle. 
I'll have six triangles. And all these six triangles will be congruent to triangle OAB. Because it's regular hexagon. In addition, you know that you can easily count the total of inner angles of any hexagon, any polygon in 180 times n minus 2. And to find one angle <coughs> in chapter 13, you have to divide by number of sides. Since number of sides in hexagon is six, and you plug in here six, you have 180 times four, six minus two, divided by six, and six goes in 180 30 times. 30 times four is 120. What is 120? 120, I can make it dirty here. But 120 is any of this up to the end of 120 degrees. This is 120, this 120, all of them 120. But since all these triangles are congruent, each of this angle equals to this is bisector, all the sum bisector, and this is 60 degrees, and this is 60 degrees. This is 60 degrees. And this is 60 degrees, etc. So far, so good. If these two inner angles in triangle AOB, triangle AOB, each of this angle is 60 degrees, so angle AOB. A or B, also 60 degrees. Why? 60 plus 60 plus X is 180. So it must be 60 degrees. So based on this, triangle A or B is equilateral. I just proved it. This triangle is equilateral. I just prove it because if all angles the same, so all sides also the same. From chapter 13, without looking, just raise your hand who remember formula for equilateral triangle area. Raise hand who remember this formula. Only Daniel, only sixth grader. What about the rest of you? For equilateral triangle, area equals s square square root of three divided by four it's only for equilateral what is s is the side what side any side because all sides are the same two 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 or equals s is two to the second Times square root of three or four. Two to the second is four. Square root of three or four. Cancel out and would be square root of three. So far, so good. I found area of equilateral. The next step: how to find area of hexagon. Area of hexagon. equals to area of six of these triangles. Area of triangles. Why? Because all of them the same. This, 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 and this, all in the same. So area of hexagon equals to six, and each of these triangle is square root of three. So far, so good. I saw it partly, but I did not finish. To finish this, look at this. What is our strategy? Remember, area of shaded area is always combination of standard shapes. Always combination of standard shapes. What is my goal? E from area of hexagon. I subtracted area of circle, I get area shaded. 
But to find area of circle, I have to know radius. If I take different color, let's say red again, or why red? Where is my, okay, put, let's put it up. Where is my blue? Here it is, blue. This is radius. How do you see this? Brand new. Hmm. Come on, let's use this. Let's say this is radius. Let me try this one. But I don't know radius. If I knew radius, I would get answer instantly, right? How to get radius? You can do a few ways. Either use Pythagorean theorem or step number four. I write over there. Area of triangle, uh, A or B, area of triangle A or B, okay. Maybe this is better. Equals two. Times height, which is radius, and base times height, and base times height divided by two. And divided by two. From another side, I already found this area is equal to square root of three, because this is the same triangle. Only I found area. Of this triangle, use this formula. Now I use this formula, but this is the same triangle. And this equals to square root of three. If I cancel out this, I would get r equals to square root of three. Uh -huh. So step number five I can easily find area of circle, which is pi r squared, or pi times square root of 3 to the second, which is equal to 3 pi. Beautiful. The only last, uh, last step left. Area shaded, and then like this question, the test equals area of x minus area of what of a uh, circle. But area of x we found, 6 square root of 3. An area of circle we found as well is three pi. Check mark. Okay. Who understand this? Can't percent. Again, shaded area is combination of standard shape. Always. Don't memorize area. For instance, do I remember formula of uh, area of hexagon? Don't even try. This ancient philosopher Mirabeau, he said, your garbage, your, your brain is not a garbage can. Don't memorize everything. You have to know basic and use logic. Basic, you know, this is basic. This is basic. I found one triangle multiplied by six, so instantly get the real, this one. After that, from this nice relationship, I found radius, which is height. I found radius. If I have radius, I know circle area. Subtract one from another, I get what area of shaded. I have special big reference book, this big, for engineers. They name it Korn, his name or this Dr. Korn. His reference book for engineer and mathematicians. It's thousands of books, thousands of pages. And very small font, like five, probably small font five. A very thin pages. And they give for formula for everywhere. Thousands and thousands, maybe millions of forms. Do we need this? No. 
engineer when he is in hurry, he, he can find this. To us, only this one, brain and logic, nothing else. Why I'm telling about this? Because I remember some students at home, they found in Google some formula and plugin. Not good idea. You never memorize this garbage. Can I read this? Do you have any questions? Professor. Yes. So we make its equal equilateral triangle. I, I don't get the question. Ask again. Uh, why did you make its? Uh, it, why did you make like decision that is uh, equilateral triangle? I just proved. I I found total of inner and total of inner angles of any hexagon I already raised it from 180 times n minus two. I found one angle which is 120 degrees this angle. Now since uh already raised it but you know since hexagon is regular what is regular all sides the same mm -hmm. I connected all these vertices by diagonals I found six triangles and I proved since this is the same size, each side is the same, each angle is 120. I just prove we have six the same triangles. I don't say this is uh, equilateral yet. After that, I prove this the equilateral. Try to ask me a question before I raise, okay? So How I, this is each angle 120 degrees. Remember, you have in your notes 120. If all six triangles are the same and they adjacent one next to one next to another, if this is 60, this must be 60. If one point is this is bisector. Here to the left side, if this is 60, 60, both angles is 60 and 60. If two angles of any triangle, 60 and 60, how many degrees we have in the third angle to get 180 degrees? 60. 60. How do we name triangle where all angles 60 degrees? Equilateral. Equilateral. Oh, yeah. Equilateral. Lateral is, is Latin is side. Equal is the same side. So when I prove it, after that I apply this, I already raise it, this formula. Chapter 13. And when I get area one triangle, I just multiply by six because we have six triangles. Did that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Uh, Dr. Farber, can you explain 112? Sure, just read this out loud. Um, nice. With feelings and intonations, right? 112. Points yes. A, B, and C divide the segment M, N into four equal parts. If M A equals 12 and C N equals 18, what is the possible length of the segment M N? Nice reading, Nicholas. Okay. By the way, uh, Nicholas, did you um did you watch the link I sent you? Honestly. No. Link for our previous lecture. No. Okay, redo this because this is interrelated. In this lecture, I explain one more time about prime factorization. Remember this, right? Yes. And this is key, one of the key questions, easy question, even though you study prime factorization in fourth grade, but this is key thing. So everybody, I will check next time. Without exception, read this lecture again. Ольга, пошлешь еще раз, пожалуйста, линк на лекцию, которую нам выложили на SHS. Спасибо. Point A, B, C. Divide the segment M, N into four equal parts. Uh -huh. If M, A. equals to 12 and we have four parts no pictures nothing 
and cn equals to 18. What is possible length of segment MN? Okay. Well, if I see this problem, I understand this is supposed to be GCF, some part which goes to each of these segments without remainder. And how to find GCF, greatest common factor? You make what? Prime factorization first. What is 12? Two and six, two and three, and you can present M in a GCF equals two to the second times three to this number. No, not this, not GCF, just two to the second times three. When I get the second, I will make solution for GC. Okay, write this prime factorization. This is 2, 9, and this is 3, 3. I need to represent this number like 2 times 3 to the second power. We need it. And from this lecture, no difficulties, right? What did you see? Like small kids, they don't know this power, how small kids work. I show how small kids. And, uh, for great how they work. They say, oh, look at what now was supposed to be in common. Yes, this in common and this in common. Uh -huh. What else is can I use the second one? No, because we don't have another another one here. Can I use this one? Yes. And uh GCF would be two times three, which is six for small kids. For you. Think more creatively. You have to say the smallest power two to the first and three to the first. So GCF GCF equals to four. Uh, two times three six sorry. six. So far so good. Raise your hand to understand this. This is part of this lecture. Okay. This is one. What is four or what is six actually? This is length of one part. The length of one uh, part or one segment. Segment, small segment. But we have how many parts? Four. Uh -huh. Four, right? What this number support? Since we have four parts, four parts is four times six, which is twenty-four. They don't ask you, but if you'd like, I can illustrate this by picture now when you got everything. Understand up to this point everything. If you'd like. Who would like to illustrate this and to see what is going on? Hands up. I just explained what is. I make this room here. Okay, we have MA. Okay. MA. M. And our length is six. MA would be. Six and six, which is twelve. Why twelve? Because it's given M A equals to twelve the same. And C N okay. This N. So this is C. And CN equals to 18. If 18, one less is 6, and this 18, 6 goes in 18 three times. So this is one part. Another part, 6. 
n over 6. And this is Cn. M A, sorry. M A. This was A. Why? Because M A equals to 12. And C M equals to 18. And beautiful, you see what is beauty of this? Each part is six. Six, six, six. And my point, this is a great example of GCF. One percent is one percent up to this point. Hundred. Um, yes. Dr. Farber, can you also explain ninety? Sure. But do you understand this, Nicholas? Yes, I understand this. 